Hi, my name is T. Payton, and I subscribe to uh, Learn Final Cut Pro 10. And I saw this little video, and I wanted to um, give a few tips that I've seen about disconnecting connected clips in Final Cut 10 and some of the issues that came up with that. So let me flip over here to Final Cut, and if I can find my mouse. I've got two screens. And, oh, there we go. Found it. Okay, so here I've got just a, a few clips. This is from DaVinci, Blackmagic DaVinci Resolve and the sample clips that come with it with the excellent program that I paid nothing for because it's free. But it's excellent nonetheless. So um, what Paul had done is he had put a um, uh, lower third here into, uh, you know, on the first part of this clip. And he was showing how the problem with this, if you have this title you want at the beginning of your timeline, and then you move another clip around it, it moves with it, which most of the time you want, but in this case, you don't want. So how can we deal with that? Well, a couple different ways that I've th that I wanted to share. Actually, let me let me move the birds here to the end. This will be a little easier to illustrate. Now, one thing you can do, which is kind of neat, is if you hold down the Option key and drag a clip, it's going to peel off a copy. But look what happens. It peels off a copy without the connected clip, which is kind of cool. So let's say you wanted to just swap out this bird for this bike here. So let's go ahead and pull off a copy right here at the end. And now let's just let's drag this below this clip right here. And let's just turn this off. So now you have our lower third, just like we need it. You have our other clip over here, and it was pretty quick and easy. Now one thing you could do over here besides turning it off is if we um, undo that, you can shift delete, which will replace it with a gap. And you might want that, you might. Um, not, it doesn't really matter. Uh, I would just go ahead and just turn it off because it's easy. Then if you finalize your edit and you want to make things nice and tidy, you can clip on your, click on your connected clip that's below your other track and you can say overwrite to primary storyline and it bops right up there. So a couple good solutions. Let's go back to our original scenario here and look at another way of pulling this off. Now you could use the same option drag technique to pop this over here and in this case, let's use the P key for position, which basically puts the primary storyline into a overwrite mode, of course, to an insert ripple mode that it is always in, unless you're using the position tool. So now I'm going to drag this over and just pop it at the beginning. And you can see it just overwrote it. And our connected clip has stayed there the entire time. So that's another scenario that you can use. One other thing you can do is you can use a replace technique. So let's go ahead and pull off our option right here. Um, I mean, option drag that to pull off another copy. And this only works if you have the event browser in icon or film strip view. This is what list view looks like, as you're familiar with, and this is what icon view. Now you have to have an icon view so that the in and out points show. For some reason it doesn't show up in your um, in list view. So let's make this a little shorter so it's a little more dramatic. You can see what's happening here in the edit. So I'm going to select this and hit shift F. Now it's highlighting the in and out points here in the event browser. You don't even have to pay attention to this. It's just happening. Okay. Then select your target, so to speak, and hit shift R. And what it did is replace it. And notice your edit, I'm sorry, your connected clip or your title in this case is stayed right where it needs to be. Now, that's all fine and good if you have a very simple um, edit and maybe you just have one connected clip or something. But what about a more common scenario of an overlay that you're going to have over a video? So let's get rid of this title. Let's bring in this Netscape logo. And let's pull this Netscape logo um, over here. And let's do minus one to pop that at the beginning. And we'll stick this at the end. Okay, great. Just what we need. Okay, a little big for our Netscape logo. Circa 19... Uh, boy, when was Netscape around? I don't remember. Isn't that amazing? A company can be the biggest thing and it can completely go away. Okay, no offense if you're a Netscape. If you still work at Netscape and you're still doing something. So we've got our little bug here. This is just fine. 
But of course we want to edit. And doing that's not a problem, but if we bra if we drag this over here, ah, we've got the same problem again with this connected clip. We want to have some more freedom. Well, to have a little bit more freedom, you can say, oh, well, you know what I need to do? I need to make this into a storyline. That will do it. Well, no, the problem is the connection point. What we need to do is connect it to something else. So let's undo out of that, get rid of that secondary storyline. And this time, let's go to the, the top of our edit and choose to insert a gap. Let's hit Control D, make this gap just an even one second. Now, if we can, let's pull this Netscape logo back. And now, okay, this is good because it's not connected to that first clip, and you can move these things around freely. Sweet, just what we need. Of course, when you play back to the client, you say, yeah, you got a bug there for a second. So let's make this even a little bit cleaner. This is what you want to do to use a storyline. Now, a storyline can have gaps in it, which is kind of cool, but the connection still stays at the beginning point of this gap, of this, sorry, connected to this gap. So it, it's much easier when you actually see it working. Let's change the positions tool again with P, and let's just move this over. Let's turn on snapping and pop it over there. So now we have no logo at the beginning, and everything snaps in just as it is, as it should be, and you can move things around without a problem. Now, probably to make this a little better, what you'd want to do is make this at zero frames, um, the start. So you'd probably want to back up your timeline, your time code start by one second. And that's a pretty easy thing to do. Um, in this case, we're going to click on, I'm editing in a compound clip, by the way. kind of like to do that, if it's a simple project. And I'm going to choose Edit Compound Clip Settings. And I'm just going to make this at negative one second. So now, I've got my, I think I have, I have this in frame mode. Let me see what I have this in mode here. Uh, no, that's frames. You know what? It didn't work. What's going on here? Let's go back to our, to this. Interesting. Okay, that did one second. Negative. Oh, you know what I need to do? I need to put it at 59, uh, 59, oh, sorry, 59, 59, 0. There we go. I'm sorry. 59, 59, 0. There we go. Okay, now it will start at an even one hour. So that's a little better way of dealing with that. So if you wanted to do that, um, that's just a nice way of dealing with it and realizing that you have an extra um, second over here. Now, you can make this tiny. You can make this just one frame if you want to. And if you have a hard time selecting, up your timeline index. And then you can find your gaps right there. And you can make those, you know, you can hit Control D, and, I'm sorry, hit Control 2 and then Control D, and then you can make those, you know, however big or however small you want to in there. So um, anyway, hopefully it gave you some options on how to deal with um, connected clips, especially when you want them to stay up there and act more like a track-based system. You can use um, these techniques. Thanks for watching.